Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I have an incredible piece of wood to turn for you. It was sent to me by Scott Martin and it is a piece of spalted birch. And you might be saying, what is so special about a piece of spalted birch? Well, let me tell you, this spalted birch came from a famous woodland in the Midlands of Central England called Canuck Chase. And you might still be saying, so what? I mean, it's just a piece of wood out of a forest. That woodland used to be a royal hunting ground for Henry VIII. Now think about that for a second. I can't wait to turn this. Let me show you the kit I've got. I'm going to be using a classic elite fountain pen kit in gunmetal black and gold. This is going to be a gorgeous pen once turned. The kit that I'll be using today is the classic elite 24 karat gold and gunmetal fountain pen kit. This is an absolutely beautiful kit. I've made several of them and I really love them. We're going to be drilling 10 millimeter holes for both the cap and the main body of the pen. So we just need to get our blanks marked. I'll put a little cross hash here. That'll let me know how to fit the two blanks back together. And now we're ready to head to the bandsaw. Whenever I drill a two-part blank, I always like to find my hash mark and make sure that I drill from the hash mark down through the blank. What that does is guarantee that my center sections of my pen will match up when they're reassembled in the kit. This will be a little hard to see in the video, but what I did is I took a little machinist square and at this hash mark, I drew a line right across the center of the blank on both blanks. That way I can put the tip of my bit right at the center of that line and I should have the closest match that I can when I put the pin back together. Got this blank chucked up and we're just going to really go slow with this one. I just want to take it easy and see what happens as the tool hits the wood. Uh, it, it appears that because it's spalted, a little spalted, it's a little punky. If I start seeing some heavy chip out, I'm going to take it off the lathe and round over the corners. Uh, but if, if it looks like it's going to turn well uh, and true up well, I'll just keep going with it. This blank is absolutely stunning. Just look at that. It's gorgeous. There is one thing that's kind of odd, and I hadn't figured that out yet. I sharpened this tool before I started, and I stopped a while ago right after I got done truing and sharpened it again, and I'm already starting to feel 
that uh, it's dragging a little bit. And I don't know, I don't know why, because the wood does not feel incredibly hard. And uh, it's just weird. So I'm going to stop real quick and I'm going to just give this one quick pass over the grinder. I'll be back and we'll get this turned down to the bushings. I am very happy with that. Just look at the color in that blank. What I'm going to do is I've got it all the way down to the bushings. It feels great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, break out my sandpaper and I'm going to start off by flipping these blanks over so that I can sand them in reverse. And then I'm going to flip flop between each grit. So uh, they'll be turned in reverse for 120, flip back for 220, flipped over for 320, so on and so on. I'll sand probably up to about 400 grit. Uh, then we'll come back, take a look at them, and uh, see if we're ready for, for our CA finish. I've sanded my blank down to 400. I have replaced my turning bushings with my nonstick bushings, and I have cleaned the blank with denatured alcohol. I'm ready to apply that first coat of thin CA. Looks pretty good. I think I'm about out of CA. I'm going to go get a new bottle, but I really like how this wood is starting to pop. I'll go ahead and show you one more coat of CA, which should give it a little bit more shine, and then we'll shut the camera off. Coat number two. That's a little better. I knew I was getting down toward the end of the bottle. Much better. Look at that. It's just really, this is a gorgeous piece of wood. I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. We'll finish up with the CA, and then I'll come back for uh, the polishing and buffing. Got my CA finish applied to my blank. I'm ready now to go ahead and micro mesh. I'll run through the first pad or two, and then I'll drop off in the effort to save a little bit of time. After the micro mesh, the blank looks absolutely stellar. It's already popping. I'm going to go ahead and get my buffing wheel on the lathe and we'll buff this up and get it put into a kit. Man, is it going to be beautiful. Cannot wait to see this on a kit. We're ready to assemble our pin and we'll start by pressing one of these threaded couplers into each end of the front blank. Now we can thread the cap on. Actually, got that backwards. Nope, that is right. That is the center section. It matches up with those two lines right there. We'll thread this on. Normally, you would put the ink refill in here or the ink cartridge and thread this nib on, but I'm just going to go ahead and thread the nib without the ink cartridge. I don't like to put that in until someone uh, receives this pin. That way, I don't have to worry about it leaking. So here is the front section of the pin. Just absolutely gorgeous. 
For assembling the back half of the pin, we're going to press this little threaded adapter into the cap. And I'm not going to press it all the way in, and I'll show you why in a second. Well, there we go. I'm going to stop shy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this little gold ring. Actually, I'm going to apply the clip first. Then the little gold ring because there's a notch on the ring that goes over the clip. See if I can get it down on there. I was trying to get the clip to go farther down onto this little threaded section when I realized there's a shoulder there and that shoulder gets pushed flush with the blank and I stopped shy. And this is precisely why I stopped shy. You'll see there's a little knockout in this trim ring. That little knockout goes over top of the clip. Then the threaded cap goes onto the back. And what I'm going to do is find a spot to put this, and I think that's about the best spot right there. Now I'm going to tighten the cap as tight as I can get it. And I'm going to go ahead and press it the rest of the way in, which should give me a really nice fit here. My concern was if I press that in too far, I wouldn't have a good fit or I wouldn't be able to tighten this, this cap down all the way. But by leaving it proud, assembling it, and then coming back and pressing it the rest of the way in, I now get a perfect fit all the way around. Isn't that beautiful? Last piece is we've got this trim ring that presses into the front. We'll just very carefully press that into place. Okay. You can see we've got a gorgeous fit along that ring, a gorgeous fit along the cap. Here's the front half of the pin. Got a beautiful fit back here at the top end. Bottom end is a gorgeous fit. Should be able to thread it right together. And we have got one beautiful, beautiful pin. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop for the turning of this pen. Had an amazing time turning it. And the blank, the history behind the blank, the story, just makes it so much more incredible. I am so thankful to have the opportunity to turn something like this. It, and, and the pen is just, just gorgeous. I want you guys to know that this will be the last video that you see with this particular format, where I show the entire process of turning a pen. I made an announcement on my channel the other day, and you may not have seen it, so I'll go ahead and mention it here. I'm going to change up my format. I'm going to build a video that shows all the prep work for a wood or an acrylic blank. And by prep work, I mean measuring the blank, cutting, drilling, tubing, and squaring the blank so that it's ready to go to the lathe. I'm no longer going to show that as part of my video. I'll make a reference in each video to that master video and I'll include a link in the comments so if you're interested in seeing blank preparation you can go watch that and it'll be extremely detailed. That way I'll be able to give a little more information. I've been asked to tell a little more about the kit I'm using, possibly mention drill bit sizes and bushing sizes, so I'm going to try to remember to do that, where I got the kit from, so I'll include that information and who sent me the gorgeous blank and what the blank is. That'll all be at the front of the video. I'll go. I'll make a mention of the uh, addendum video if you're interested, and I'll go straight to turning, finishing, and assembly of the pen. I will continue to show full assembly because I know everyone likes to see that. What that's going to allow me to do is, if I'm not videotaping that for every single pen I do, it's going to buy me a little more time in the shop to prepare pens and be able to hopefully get a few more videos out to you guys. I've been blessed by so many generous people out there who have sent me so many incredible blanks. My table is absolutely stacked with them, and I'm just having a hard time getting them all turned. So this is an effort by me to be able to make sure I get to all these wonderful blanks that you guys have sent me. Thank you so much for those. And one quick note on those. Many of you have sent me multiple blanks or large blocks of wood that could be cut into several blanks. What I'm going to do is choose my favorite blank. If you sent me four, five, six blanks, 
I'm going to pick my favorite and I'm going to turn that one in a video. Uh, I still will thank you for all of them because I do appreciate it. It's always, always appreciate it. With that, I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. I hope you're going to like the new format. Please keep me posted with feedback because the feedback for this new format came from you guys. Let me know what you think. I'll see you again real soon. Take care and have a wonderful evening.